Bottom All right, from Shrooms to Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram, episode 49. We knocked out the first 48. <laughs> this up to you. Excuse me. This episode brought to you by Sandbar. Sports Grill. Home of the fish taco, baby. From Shrooms to Skyrim, this is Matthew and Hiram. From Shrooms to Skyrim, this is from Shrooms to Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram. Yes. I'm here with my co-host, Hiram. What's I'm up? Matthew. Joined today by uh, Anthony, Tony. What, what, what do you prefer? Either way, bro. Tony, Tony's good. Either way. Tony. Okay. Tony. Oh. <laughs> Tony. Tony Montana, man. Tony. He does it good, too. Does it real good. It, it yeah. <laughs> I watched that movie so many times when I was a right. kid. You do it so good, step host. <laughs> Step host. Get it? No. You gonna make me explain oh, it? I was I was hoping it would last longer. That's what she said. <laughs> yes. Do we have a the button first, for that? That's what she said of the episode. This oh. is uh this is getting off to a great start. I like it already. Can't wait to finish. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah, so when uh so, well, we're actually joined today by a very smart and educated gentleman. Appreciate that. Sophisticated. You're in, you're in law school right now, right? Yes. Yes, I'm in How's law that? school. How's that? It's good. It's good. It's my second semester, so I'm still I'm still a 1L, you know. Oh, uh, okay. Um, uh, is there, is, do you have like a certain field in mind at this point, or are you? So, here's the thing. <laughs> I got into law school because, not because I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to just know the ins and outs of like, the legal process and to understand how to learn, uh, interpret and draft legislation. Cause I was into politics uh. and now it's like, <laughs> I don't even know if I even have future political aspirations. Okay. After this episode, I'm sure any possibility of a future <laughs> political aspiration will be long gone. Wow. Right out the window, sir. <laughs> right out the window. It's all right. We'll try to make sure that you can at least run for city council. <laughs> <laughs> No, by the time I'm through with you, you're not even gonna be able to be on your on the PTA. <laughs> uh oh. That was uh that was that was one thing you were mentioning to me when I first asked you to come on the pod uh, a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. You were like, okay, but I know how you guys get, you know, real raunchy stuff. We gotta play safe because I'm looking at a future political career. So, with that in mind, hold on though, we're just like skipping a big thing here that I have a follow up question to, okay. if I may. Let's hear it. Why all of a sudden the skip in the no political career? Uh, like, well, I mean, I mean, besides the obvious. Okay, right. but <laughs> we're going to get to that. Stop fucking interrupting me. Uh, we talked about this. We talked about this. Whatever, dude. You're embarrassing me in front we're of guys. We're going at Matt's oh pace God. tonight. That's, that's obviously like. We have uh, to go to counseling. That's obviously like. Not a loaded question, but like uh, it's gonna be like an extenuated answer, and you cut me off right in the middle of my setup. You have a setup. You wouldn't know I had a setup <laughs> if you weren't too busy cutting me off. My bad. I was gonna say I came up with some slogans for you. Slogans to run on. Let's do it. Let's do it. So your name's Anthony Paz. Uh-huh. P A Z. What's the first one? Mm-mm. Oh, here we go. Anthony Paz for Congress. Imagine the possibilities. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Imagine the possibilities. Okay. <laughs> Possibilities. Possibilities. I like that. Okay. Okay, you ready? Okay, let's, go, let's ahead. Do another, go ahead. Go ahead. Give me another one. Give me another one. Press play on pause. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's a good one. you have, there's a that's career a one, that you may not know that you have. Okay, I'm not sabotaging your campaign. No, no, no. I am 
running. I'm the I'm the manager. Yeah, I'm the campaign the manager. manager. I, you're definitely the campaign slogan guy. That's for sure. That was those are both very good. How long did it take for you to think those up? As soon as I like started in that direction, I was like, that was why I came up within the first two minutes. I haven't thought of a single one since. It would have taken me eons to come up with that. I suck at mm. things like that. So, how do how do you feel about those campaign slogans? Are those they're good? <laughs> they're good for city council for sure. <laughs> for sure. For, sure. for, for city the council. PTA, <laughs> your you are in, man. I like imagine the possibilities. I like that one. It's but, very but like with with social media, you know the way it's set up mm-hmm. and video playing and some sort of uh, e- editing shenanigans. Yeah. And with the video stopping and going, press play on pause. You know what I'm saying? I like that. I never really had a, a slogan in mind, even when I was thinking about running for office. What because, office would you run you for? Because you was too uh, focused on the important issues. Okay. Well, so I'm here to worry about the frivolities. <laughs> I've, lear- I've learned to appreciate how much can get done at the state and local level, mm-hmm. especially now. Um, but there is a desperate need for good leadership at the federal level. Oh. Um, so, Shit. I mean, I, I was I was always interested in U.S. House and uh, interested in setting term limits. It's, oh, yeah, I'm not, yeah. Gonna, I'm not even going to talk about the issues that I would that I would stand on. Uh, but. I, I listen so far. The, that first one is uh, you got it's my vote. <laughs> well, because because in Congress, like you, you can do two t- uh, for U.S. House. You can run uh, two year terms, but you can run to your terms for 15 terms and then right. you're in there for 30 years, you know? So right. it's like, and, and, and when, when you're in and you're just doing the reelection cycle, yep. all you're essentially doing is fundraising all of the time. That's you're, what, you're, 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 exactly. you're, I mean, you see how many votes these guys miss. Yeah. How, how, you see how many votes these guys miss. They're not even there. Hmm. If I, if, <laughs> I mean, I don't even want to get it. I'm with you. I'm with you. It's, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. Term limits are definitely something that, yeah. Uh, we really, really need to add, uh, but you know, but it's just, it's just, it's hard to, to th- that's their vested interest. Yeah. Nobody votes against their vested interest. Yeah. Right. So it, it's just gotten so messy to the point where it's like, now it looks, it, it, it just all looks like political satire. It just, it, it's just a joke from, from both sides, you know? So everybody's, they're <clears throat> all getting rich. And that's why, you know what, if y'all are all getting rich, then let me go ahead and do the same thing. Let me just go ahead and take care of myself, my family, my tribe. Let me find ways to make money and add value to other people's lives and just handle my business. You know? That's what uh, uh, Jay-Z said. Something like that. Um, Which one? Uh, how, how I'm going to help the poor if I'm one of them. Mm-hmm. I got rich and gave back to me. That's the win-win. Mm. That was good. Facts. Good shit. Um, the next time... You see it, the homie and his rim spin. Just know his mind is working just like them. The rims, that is. Mm. I got one. Uh, for this from Jay-Z, too. Um, around here, we measure success by how many successful people are next to you. Oh. Okay. Around here, uh, you know, you're broke if everyone is broke except for you. Yeah, so, so right now, I'm going to measure your success at zero because there are no successful people next to you. <laughs> Ooh. I got pickle Rick Ooh. by my side. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey. First off, okay. So there's one. I got su- the most Marty. success. I got the most successful motherfucker in the building right here. There's one successful person on the couch. <sighs> Two Deadpool's on the couch too. He has the highest rated grossing R-rated movie of all time. You slipping up, Matt? Two successful people there on the go. couch. There you go. There you go. And he's played by the beautiful Ryan Reynolds. Just immaculate that guy's body. Seriously, his whole, his whole aura. It's right. Right. He's like a guy that like even other guys are like, God, dang. I love his sense of humor. He's, <laughs> he's just a like, funny ass guy, bro. Bro. Van Wilder still goes down as one of my favorite yeah. movies <clears throat> throughout my college years. I mean, it, I, we we must have played that thing a hundred million times. Uh, I love that movie. He's so funny in that movie. Great. Ah, Ryan Reynolds. Okay. <laughs> Keanu Reeves and Ryan Reynolds are hanging off a bridge. And I got to let one go? Yeah, you can only save one of them. Bye, Ryan. Oh, yeah, bye. Yeah, it's Keanu Keanu all the way. Yeah, it's Keanu all the way. Okay, I was just making sure. No, it's Keanu all the way. 
Just seeing where where y'all where nah, you stood. Keanu, he, he, he was just trying to make sure you weren't really gay, gay. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Either way, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> Listen, I'm comfortable with my literally, literally. <laughs> um, but uh, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. He's kind of gay to me. <laughs> What's that from? I have no idea. (laughs) It's just so weird. So, anyways, back to the political career that we just set on fire for you. (laughs) Just getting started. Here we go. Um, so now now that we've shifted and we're not going to do that anymore, we're now we're but we're still in law school. Mm -hmm. Why am I in law school now? Right. Well, this this one is 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 a real person. This is a real personal reason. Um, I got I got accepted into law school before this happened too. Uh, my wife's cousin was killed by the police. Um, two undercover cops in plain clothing, in San Jose, California, and uh, it was a it was a really really interesting situation. We had to fly over there, and we were like, kind of like, uh, uh, holding the line because there was like a lot of protests and everything. Um, the lawyers that they had hired, they don't want to take the case. So now this school is located in San Diego, which means when I graduate, I take my California bar. So it's possible that I might take up that case in the next three years. If the police haven't completely buried any evidence and I, all the evidence and I can actually do something about it. So there's a big why behind it now. Um, but I don't foresee myself being a lawyer. Uh, I, I don't foresee myself going to law school to be a lawyer. But if I need it, I will I will utilize it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what other things can you do with a law degree? Well, there's there's a uh, there's a uh, the the book The Godfather by Mario Puzo. Yeah. Have you read the book or just the movie? No, I haven't read the book. The book is fantastic. I know the book is fantastic and I know that the book is very different than the movie. Uh, not very different, just more details. And that there is stuff in the book that they clearly had to leave out of the movie because it was just it, it wouldn't translate very well yeah. on the film yeah yeah specifically with one of the characters johnny fontaine the the singer but um the guy that's th- supposed to be uh frank sinatra yeah 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 <laughs> he, he was actually there was a lot more about him in the book than in the movie okay but um there was a quote in the book that says a lawyer can steal more uh, a lawyer with a briefcase can can steal more than a hundred men with guns oh i remember that that wasn't in the movie that was that was that I read that in the book. No, I yeah, no, that. I know, I know, I remember that. Yeah, it was a and and um, you know, there's there's a lot of truth to that. There's so much that you can leverage by by being a, a an Esquire? attorney. Esquire. Now it doesn't mean that I'm going <laughs> to law school to to steal from people, right? But to understand the law versus depending on someone to defend the law on your behalf is. Yeah, you know, we we you know, we was kind of talking about like not about that specifically, but like. In the same spirit of that, mm-hmm. uh, like the the perspective of the crime. So basically, um, like I was looking at a stat where it was like, you know, someone, you know, I, I don't remember off the top of my head right now. Like someone has stole, like let's say, like eight dollars and seventy one cents worth of shit from Walgreens. And there was like twelve thousand news stories about it, uh, countrywide, right? You know, shoplifting. And then next to that, it was uh, yeah, like, and this was like, I think it was Walgreens, could have been CVS, but it was like, you know, Walgreens has uh, stolen like four billion dollars from employees, and there was exactly one news story about it. And it just kind of shows you, like, it. They whereas, like, what you terms. said about, like, or the quote from the the book, it's like, it really kicks in, like, the the sens- sens- uh Fuck, what's the word I'm trying to say? Sensitization. Oh, uh, Sens- uh, sensationalization. Sensationalism. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Yo, like, my mouth is not working correctly today. My brain's going faster than my mouth is going. Anyways, the <laughs> sensationalism of it, like you, you got to take that into account when, you know, like what is gonna be construed 
and like what are people actually gonna pay attention to? And I've been paying attention to like what is gonna what are they gonna put the spotlight on? Well, you see that that's the thing. It's like everything is sensationalism now. Like every channel, um, I think it just came out um, CNN, MSNBC. They've lost like ninety percent of all their viewers yeah. this past year alone. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's like there are so many new like rogue channels now, social media channels, and everyone is trying to find what is the truth, what's being overly exaggerated, what's actually happening. Nobody fucking knows. So anymore. it it it's it, that's a that's a nightmare. You know the the media landscape that mm-hmm. we've come to. Okay, um, I've said it on the show before. There's essentially five major corporations that own yep. like ninety percent of the media in this country. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a serious problem. You can clearly see it in the news, right? You see a headline. You can. I'm just saying, like a blanket headline, right? You see a headline, and you already know just by the headline whether it's a Republican point of view or a Democrat point of view. Right, yep. you you already know just from the headline you're going to be spoon fed something that isn't just news. It's the story with a twist, mm-hmm. and that's that's all it is. It's it, it, it's it's horrible, man. It's horrible. Now I I, I do I, I don't want to get you know you can tell me no and that's fine. Okay. But the the situation that you're talking about with your uh, wife's cousin cousin. How long ago did this happen in San? Uh, you said San Jose or San Diego? San Jose. San Jose. So this yeah. is outside of San Francisco, yeah. basically the northern part of California. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and w- w- when are we talking? Like a couple of years ago, or it was, it was last year. Um, okay. During the summertime. <clears throat> oh. And uh, yeah, I mean, they said that they were conducting some kind of private investigation, but they were posted up in front of his house and. You know, it probably wasn't the first time that he'd seen this car with people that he knows aren't from his neighborhood. And who knows? Maybe he called the police before. Maybe, you know, his his his. And so and they're just calling it a. So so he so he went out on his own, you know, and he had his gun with him. Uh. But the, the problem is it was unannounced. One of the cops ran away and hid instead of announcing themselves once they see him. Right. And then um, right before the whole incident occurred, and we, you know, I can show you later about what happened, but, like, you know, uh, they cut the cameras off, and then they just they just played on, like, this guy was out there looking for trouble. And in retrospect, like, f- for me, for example, like, I mean, I can't put myself in his position. And, I, and, again, I don't know how many times he'd experienced that before, but it's like uh, you can say there was maybe a smarter way to go about it, but... Um, the guy with the guy was killed with an AR-15 rifle, and, and they, you know, there was so much that they didn't want to release, and it was just so. Weird. Wow, that's so very rent that, that, that he was killed with an AR-15 yeah. rifle by the. That's not a standard yeah. issued police weapon. I mean, maybe it is for undercover cops. I don't know, but it's like, why were you there? What were you conducting? What wow. are the results of your findings? Why won't you tell us anything? That's all we have is an autopsy report with three shots to the chest, and what were are, were you looking for him? Like what? You know, and it's like, and are they know, saying it's an ongoing investigation, and that's why they won't release anything? Well, that's what they always say. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, yeah. So yeah. then, you know, eventually nobody questions it. Nobody, you know, it kind of dies out, and then it's over. You know, so we'll see if we can open that up. You know, in a few years, uh, if someone, if someone is willing, if someone is not willing to take the case, I, I feel I have a duty for the sake of you know her family, which is my family, you know, to show up because someone has a capacity to do it, you know? Yeah. And again, like, look, my stepfather was a police officer. I was raised by a cop. My, uh, my wife was raised by her stepfather was a police officer, San Jose PD. Oh, same police department, the same, uh, her stepfather also low key pretty much raised her cousin too. Like he, if he knew they were cops, he would not have done that. And that's the thing is he died not knowing he was killed by cops, you know? And that had been the second shooting uh, a few months prior to that. Two undercover cops killed uh, in, uh, another person uh, of Latino descent or whatever. So, like, um, hmm. there's just questions that need to be answered, and yeah. they don't answer them. You know, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, best yeah. of luck to you guys with that. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know how to transition from that. To be I know. I know. No. I, I know. don't know how to transition from Good job, Hiram. Thanks, man. <laughs> I got, a, I got uh, a slogan. Sorry for your loss. 
You got a slogan? I got a slogan. Okay. Um, Pass the torch. My last name, Paz. Pause, ah, Pause as Paz well. Pass the, ah. Pass the torch. Pass the torch. Okay. I like that. That's like the torch. That. We're, we're living in a day and age. We got fucking 70, 80 year old fucking people been in Congress <laughs> for 40 years, 50 years. When the fuck are you going to pass the torch? Just, just Dinosaurs. People making decisions about a future that they and are not going to be a part make of. Make it relevant <laughs> by making the torch a blunt. <laughs> did, did you see the guy? I know it's Georgia. Uh, I don't really pay attention to things anymore. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know what I'm going to talk about? He did. The, uh, he's running for Senate, I believe. He did the um, yeah, I the know you're commercial about. with I know the blunt, with the joint, yeah, with the blunt. Oh no, you know that's great. About? For I mean, he's not going to get anywhere with Georgia with that. They're not exactly hip to that. I some, mean, some places in Florida. No, nah, I think I think he will. He's very yeah. Uh, well, good luck. I want to say, like, say like grassroots. That's that's like yeah. that's like uh, he he has like a history. Like he's very like battle battle. Like he backs up what he does, my, what he says. My problem is, you know. You have more personal autonomy when you're running for office. Once you get elected, if you are a Democrat or Republican, now you're beholden to the party That's and their right. agenda. That's so right. So what happens is once he gets elected, he doesn't just, matter. He falls right in fucking line. They put him in a room and they go, all right, listen, that was nice. Congratulations. You want to smoke a little weed? Smoke a little weed. That's cool. But let me tell you what you're going to vote for. And let me tell you what you're not going to vote for. And if you and if you don't, then we're either going to pull funding from you we're going to raise an army against you the next term. So right. then you spend the next two years racing against them. And like that's, and that's why it's like, what's the point of me running for office when I know how this fucking game goes, when I know that you can't run as an independent, when I know that people just want honest people who aren't beholding to the two party system. Florida is a closed primary. That means you have to vote along party lines. Right. And right. that they do that for a reason. Of course, these guys are buddy, buddy with each other. They're, yeah. They, they fight on TV and then behind closed doors. They're cool. You know, so it's like, then forget about Cause it. Because it's, it's a, ca- dude, like, they're all part like, of the cast. Like, this cast it's like system. WWE. Dude, it, it really <laughs> it, is. It's just like WWE. It really is. It's exactly it really like is. WWE. And then, and then what's crazy is that like, you could, you could, you could be running, let's say for Senate, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a super PAC in your name, right? That's just basically just a hordes of cash going to you and you could lose and you're not beholden to that money at all. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it, it's like it's it, we're, we live in a very weird, weird, weird system. Yeah. So a- that, Anthony like, does where, it's, where it's where it's clearly being taken advantage of when when your moral compass is uh, pointed in the right direction as yours is. Does it lead you uh, eventually to when you start out optimistic to just ending up cynical? I mean, I've I've always been I've always been optimistic, glass half full. But within the last two years, I've become a lot more realistic, and I think I think there's power in cynicism, you know, because what do you mean? <laughs> because you you look you look at you. I mean, we can still have laughs, we can still have fun, we can still talk our shit, we can still spend time with our family and loved ones. Doesn't mean you have to walk and be a miserable person, right? But having a cynical worldview of of our current structures, our current leadership is just like. Like, look at the people that are in office when they're on camera, when they talk. It's like, I know you're bullshit. Yeah, like no one fucking talks like that. No one talks like that. You know, so it's like it's it's it's, you can clearly see that it's scripted. Yeah. So you can just look at that and you just it makes you cynical because, you know, you want to believe that you live in a country where like your government looks out for your best interest. I I feel like that's part of the reason (laughs) that. uh. (laughs) The Rock's <laughs> popularity has surged because oh, yeah. you, you know how like uh, mega celebrities. Oh, he could run for president. They're also <laughs> always like very like super uh, PC, you know, scripted statements. But it's like The Rock would, you know, at, at one point in time was like the only major celebrity that would say like "fuck," yeah, and work Not my anymore. ass off. Not anymore. No, like it's it's slowly like over the past like fifteen years. Shit he's like shit like that has he's, been he's no 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 brand. I'm saying like or like the 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 landscape is becoming like overwhelmingly more uh like gritty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, like it's, well, I mean No, no, but like he was like the 
you know, he'd be on Instagram and saying something. He's very, like, well-spoken, and he would say fuck. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. five years ago, before everybody was just saying fucking shit okay. on, on camera. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I feel like that's part of the thing. Cause then it's authentic. Then it, yeah, it just lends that authenticity to whatever you're saying. It's like, oh, he he must be, you know, for real, because he's talking like a normal fucking person. Well, I know he's for real because his freaking Instagram feed comes in at four o'clock in the morning. I and thought the you guys got- in the gym turning on the lights, and I'm like, who is at the gym at four o'clock in the morning? But I mean, that guy is. I, yeah. I think people people are looking for realness in their politics at this point. Like they just they just want you to give it to them straight. <clears throat> they want you to sound and look and be human, you know. Um, but, but it's so hard for those for those people to. Again, you it's exactly what you said. Is you get pulled in, you essentially get pulled into a room and you get told, "Look, this is you're going to vote for this. You're going to say this. These are the things that we're trying to get passed. You're going to vote for them, and if you don't." We're going to run somebody against you that's going to have mm-hmm. our back, like our backing. And then you, what you have to do in order to survive that kind of warfare that you're facing is shake their hand and go, okay, sure. Then you do whatever the fuck you want, and you try your best to make as much of an impact and as much noise as possible. In two years. And make yourself appealing to the masses to tune into you so that they can continue to vote for you. So you look at people like AOC, you know, you look at these like, really like leftist Democrats who are young and exciting and have full of energy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're always probably going to continue to get reelected because they have in a sense, the Trump effect, right? They, all the cameras are on them. People on Fox News are talking shit about them. That's just publicity. Right. All, we know all publicity is good publicity. There's no such thing as bad press. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then you get you get people power donations if you're non-corporate, but that's if enough people care and mobilize together to pay enough for it, you know? But then at the same time, it's like, but do you also serve my best interests or not? Because I don't think that every activist should be a politician. You know, like maybe you have your place in society and it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be governing. The role of a person in Congress, like, do you realize that you're deciding taxation, commerce, domestically and internationally? You're deciding whether we go to war or not. Like, do you know how to read laws? Do you understand right. legalese? A lot of people get elected just based on popularity. That doesn't mean you're going to govern well. Right. And that's the reason why I went into law school. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm good at talking this shit, but if I'm actually going to be about it, I have to know and understand this shit. And there's a lot of politicians that are lawyers and they ain't shit. So it doesn't mean that law school is a prerequisite to do it, but you have to have some well, foundation. Isn't uh, there isn't there like some crazy statistic that... Um I think it's like over 80% of the people in both Congress and the Senate, their actual occupation were lawyers. A lot of, a lot of them. I don't uh, know the exact and, number. And, and, and that in itself causes strife because what's a, what does a lawyer do as a profession? He defends, he defends a point of view, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, this is my point of view. This is how I see it, and I'm going to defend. And so you don't give. And what is, you know, and they, and then you have this on both sides and then you have these guys not coming together and then they're even more divided now than they've ever been before. You know, well, probably not before since we've gone to war in this country with ourselves, but you know, we're, we're at a scary place, man. We're at a scary place and you can see it. The the problem too is like I, most of my circle, like growing up, like I was in, I was very leftist Democrat. I built with a lot of people on one side of the aisle and we really believed in what we were doing. And now like I've come to the realization that a lot of the things that we did cause more harm than good. I firmly believe that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Intentions. Uh, And like now looking back and it's like, you know, we've been advocating for these things, but we didn't think it through. Yeah. And it's like, I got friends like that have come from other countries, Italy, France, and they're like, dude, you don't want the social system that you're advocating for. I left here because if I had my company over there, I'd be paying 70% in taxes. Right. So that we can have free healthcare and free education, which is shit over there. And it's like, so there's a, I I get that here. And, and I, I very much understand that. Now I will tell you this. uh, I I traveled, this is a very small, you know, uh, sample size, but I, I traveled to Vancouver. I spent about 12 days in Vancouver with my wife. Um, and it's a really cool town. It's an unbelievably beautiful city. Mm-hmm. It seems like on the surface of it, 
that the taxation of it is working, right? Everything is clean, except for you have basically six blocks, which are squared off in Hastings. And it's basically just junky central, right? It's like a skid row, yep. right? They keep them in there, but then everything else seems clean, right? Like on the outside, right? Uh, and I get it, but there has to be a better system. That was a thing with Obamacare I, that I, I, I that I advocated for was that it might not be better than the current situation that we have, but we're not doing anything about this situation. Right. So at this point, we just have to try shit. Like yeah. we just have to be willing to try shit and figure out a better way to get healthcare to millions of Americans. And, and hope to God that it works because I'm starting to see now that everything the federal government touches, they, they just fucking fuck up. You know, more red tape. <clears throat> when I was in Vancouver a few years back, I remember getting like public transportation. I was on a bus and I was talking to this lady. Oh, so how do you like living in Canada? Oh, you know, it's great. It's cool. Yeah. You know, I make sixty five thousand dollars a year as a as a as a bus, stri- you know, doing the bus. Right. I was like, oh, that's great. And I was just like, yeah, you know, we got free health care and everything. I was like, cool, cool. What are the taxes? And she's like, oh, we pay 50 percent of taxes. Yeah. I was like, well, there goes your 60 grand a year. You're, you're getting back 30, you know, so right. it's like, all right, well. I, you know, that, so it, there's, well, a, like, there's just a, like there's curiosity, a curiosity. Is there like, uh, you know, like from that 30, is there like an intangible, like amount that you're getting to that, like you're getting back 30, but is there like an amount too that you would be saving? Like because of the system that that 50% is, I mean, I mean, I, I don't really know, but the, the problem is that I don't trust what the government is doing with my tax dollars. Well, that's a, that's, that's the big that's the big thing, right? Is that people don't mind paying taxes if they know what their tax dollars are going to. But since it's all closed and we don't actually get to see how they spend the money, essentially. Well, we right? get to see it after they decide for us. Right. You know? <laughs> Great. But as like, Great. like also the problem is and like part of the reason you're going to law school is that unknown factor. That's like the reality is, you know, the majority of people don't know the ins and outs. That's like something could be blatantly wrong right in front of you. And you say, okay, like that's wrong. I want to change it. And then it becomes an issue because there's so many repercussions. Even though that's wrong in that instant instance, there's so many repercussions out of context that you have to go in such a big fucking circle just to circle back to the original point that like that now like the whole and then it just goes by the wayside because like it's like it's, it's like you said it's like you know we're in this country and things are this way and it's like oh what if they were this way and then other people somewhere else are like oh things are this way and it's not so good but yeah. Grass is greener on the other side kind of situation, right? You know? But also, too, like, even if something is good or okay or not so good, shouldn't we still always be striving to improve upon? Well, that's, I totally agree with that. That was my, that was how I felt about uh, essentially Obamacare was that while it was not set up to be the end all be all, it was, at least, hey, we got to do something. We got to try something. Now, you know, it doesn't work. It, it's not that it doesn't work. It's just not, it's, it's, again, it's this thing where, like, why can't we change it? Like, we, we see where the flaws are. We see where it didn't go right. So, but there's all this money that's behind all of it as well, mm-hmm. right? And it, 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 makes it, it, it makes it hard to get anything done. You know, these guys don't, I mean, they can't agree on anything. You know, you, you could take them outside and be like, the sky is blue, and one will tell you that it's white, and the other one will tell you that it's yellow. You know, when, when, it, come, <laughs> when it comes to healthcare, bro, like, there, there's so much that is wrong with our society today that is the real healthcare crisis that we're not addressing, you know? Like, for starters, like, obesity, cardiovascular uh, uh, disease, like, all of these things about what's in our water, what's in our food, what we do to ourselves on a daily basis— we're not even going to go into COVID because I'm not trying to get y'all canceled like they canceled Joe Rogan. But, <laughs> you know, it's like there is so much that needs to be addressed. It's like you you can't fix it with just. That's like basically there's no 
straightforward issues, evenly seemingly straightforward. Everything is very, very multifaceted. Mm-hmm. And you you create one department, and then the, you, there's something missing. You got to create another department, and it's like all these things cost money. You know, all these things cost money. And let's not forget, our country has officially gone over three, thirty trillion dollars in debt. Like you can't even compute that. You know, what I mean, it's like where the fuck are we right now? And like, when is when is shit gonna hit the fan? Do we owe that to the Decepticons? To the Decepticons? <laughs> <laughs> just, just I don't get it. Who are we $30 trillion in debt to? Oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> it's, it's a joke. That's, that's this episode the, is brought to you by Pfizer. Sandbar. <laughs> no, no. Definitely not Pfizer. Don't this say episode that. is brought to you by Sandbar and the Grove. Home of the motherfucking fish taco. They got the best fish tacos, Bob. Uh, if do. you're listening to this on the day it came out, uh, Whiskey Wednesday, mm. Sandbar, all that's the whiskey right. half off. And then, of course, this Sunday... Super Bowl. Big game. Make sure you go down there. 32 different beers on tap. They got an excellent selection of tequilas and scotch, whiskeys, and bourbon. Uh, does anyone even remember Colin Kaepernick anymore? Like, what happened to boycotting the NFL? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I mean, it's a machine, bro. It's a but billion it's be, dollar. It's a billion dollar machine. It, not, the, not that I give a shit either way about <laughs> any sport. My, my, my thing, my thing but about the serious halftime show is going to be crazy. Oh, yeah. Probably the only good halftime show in the past like decade. Uh, they've all been trash. Well, um, I don't know. When, when was Prince's halftime show? Was it in the last decade? Because Prince's halftime show was incredible, awesome. And it started raining when he started singing Purple, Purple Rain. Rain. <laughs> bro. The Come God, on, bro. The God. Come on, bro. No, you're Come right. On. Like I, I know what you're talking about. I don't know what the year that was, but it was immaculate. That, I know what you're talking about. That was that was insane, dude. It was like the heavens. Purple rain. Purple like dance, rain. You know no what? Like it that. was like God was like, "Hey, I'm gonna help you out here, big guy." <laughs> you know what introduced me to Prince? Mm. Happy feet. <laughs> you know, I just watched that with uh, my daughter for the first time. I love Happy Feet. I love Happy Feet too. Robin Williams is brilliant in Happy Feet. It's uh, Elijah That's one Wood. movie I can watch over and over again for the rest of my life. That's a good movie. So I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> it is a good movie. The the music in it is awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a fucking bop. See, I'm, it's not all just dick jokes. Sometimes we talk about family films. <laughs> Let's get into it. Okay, but don't mention that in c- such close proximity to the penguins. Okay, because <laughs> then we start talking about bestiality. Did you see? Uh, <laughs> did you see the uh, first two? Uh, male penguins ever. How uh, do penguins fuck? I don't know. That's but the, a good question. The first two male penguins <laughs> ever uh, that are a gay couple uh, brought. Uh, are you sure? Because I remember I remember hearing about gay penguins like a decade ago. No, they, but they 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 were the first confirmed to hatch. They adopted like a, like, a like an egg. Yeah, like an egg. You you. Like, because you know they sit on it, right? And well, so, yeah, but so they were they were raising a uh, up uh, uh, together. Yes, correct. That doesn't mean they're gay. Maybe they're no, maybe they're but it, but they are. But I think they are. I think they are. What what if what if I don't know? I listen, I'm just I'm telling you what what the New York Times man. All right, you know, I, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe they're heterosexual life mates. Is that what you're trying you know, to tell just, me? It's just you said what you said. What, 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 what if they're pals? <laughs> What if they're just what are they just really two good friends that were like, hey man, I've always wanted a kid. <laughs> what if they're pals? I mean, homosexuality has existed forever, you know? And Damn. Uh, it's Damn, I love the way you suck my dick. Oh my What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Wait, dude. <laughs> Time out, bro. My good pal. Get the balls, pal. <laughs> bro, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? We you don't just, got no time. You just you just took it to a whole dark, <laughs> dark, dark level. You got to stop watching that weird TV show with animals. These stars, yeah. This guy watches a very weird Netflix show that I can't even believe is on Netflix. <laughs> I heard this theory that all polar bears are left-handed. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, you got to look that up. You got to look that up. All polar bears are left-handed. Yeah. I'm left-handed. I don't know if they're... I, but how, I would figure that, like, a bear would be... A, like, it's a wild animal. It would be ambidextrous. It, would, it, it wouldn't it would have... No. It wouldn't favor one. No, just polar bears. Just polar bears? Yeah, not black bears. Not, not grizzly bears? No, just polar bears. Florida's got the brown bear. You know that? Or wait, is it a black bear? I think it might be a black bear. Well, it's because apparently uh, they sneak up on prey by covering their nose. Uh, since their nose is black to blend into the snow. Right. 
That's adorable. It's a why does it why does it have anything to do with, with the left hand? With the left hand. You can cover yourself. Then when they sneak up on their prey, they club it mercilessly with their left paw. Oh, they, they cover bro, the nose with the right paw. Bro, have you seen those videos, man? No. Oh, my God, dude. Like those, those dude, nature, those nature videos. You don't watch those nature videos? Dude, there is. Okay, so there's a video. The scientists say that polar bears actually appear to be ambidextrous and favor both paws equally. Yeah, let's see. Uh, there's a video. There's a bunch of videos, but, like. There's one where like a bison hits this chick and she goes like flying in the air. And I just laugh because I'm like, why would you get that close to a bison to begin with? But there's one where this bear just it said, swats, bye, son, just swats. I think it's like the back of a moose or something <laughs> like an old one. And just sw- I mean, just swats the shit out of it. Right. And then just starts going at it. And the thing is alive. Right. And you just hear the noise that this animal is making. Be- oh, bro, I was God. like, what the hell? There was another one that I saw recently that was a dolphin. Like, it's like a bunch of people whale watching, right? And a dolphin jumps out of the water. And as soon as the dolphin jumps out of the water, an orca right behind him hits him in the air, bro. I was like, oh, (laughs) those people got, they should tip. (laughs) That that was was crazy, dude. I saw, uh, I saw, I think, I don't know if it was a leopard or or a panther. And it jumped into a water and just snatched a, an alligator. So it was it a jaguar. A jaguar. And it jumped into the water and it snatched a caiman. Holy shit. So caimans are like South American. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, they're smaller. So the jaguar. Oh, the, that, that probably took place in Peru or in Brazil. Yeah, because there's black jaguars and the caimans are big over there. Dude. Yo, so <laughs> I'm a couple of weeks late. On what, your period? <laughs> I don't get a sound effect for that? No, you don't get no fucking sound effect. You're lucky I don't cut your <laughs> he, mic off. He get daft. He get daft. What the fuck, Anthony? Listen, I'm I'm, 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 I'm all for the roasting. Like, come for me, bro. Like, this is the I'll space come on you. <laughs> come for you. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Come on T- you. Tony with the assist. <laughs> yeah. all right, it what, wasn't what as... What is it again? Okay. The asshole that I have to turn this off? Yeah, 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 yeah. Stick you don't your, like it? Yeah, stick your <laughs> finger. <laughs> I think it's getting harder. It's Cute. not even. <laughs> oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta spread the butt cheeks open. Ah, I see. Okay, and then you gotta get in there. You put your finger in someone's asshole like that. It's gonna get harder. No <laughs> question. Here you go, Deadpool. There you go, buddy. Um. So, I just, just out of curiosity. First Anthony, of all, as far as your political career is concerned, it's over. You just you just fingered a plushie's butthole on camera, right? For at least like eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to rethink your political career for at least eight years now, um, <laughs> dude. Are you by any chance just out of curiosity? You seem like a very. Busy I'm just gonna put this person. on the hard drive and like put it in one of those like. Buzz Depot lockers, like in the movies, <laughs> and then just wait for you to reach some level of prominence and blackmail you with it. Excellent. Are you by any chance watching any of the uh, the Mandalorian or the Book of uh, Boba Fett by any chance? It's the Book of Boba Fett. Put some respect nah, on my bro. boy's name. Oh, man. You don't oh, fuck man. with Star Wars? Oh. It's not that I don't fuck with it. It's just... He's uh, a busy man. He's a busy man. I, I really don't watch like TV or a lot. Okay, that's yeah. literally no excuse. TV is more important than real life. That's all I do. It's valid. Well, I mean, a, I don't know valid. about that. I'm going to be honest. Wait, switch gears real quick to music. Okay. No Benny the Butcher. Came out? Watch the fuck out. He's not playing around. Already dropping that heat. Yeah. Johnny P's Caddy featuring J. Cole. Mm. The first single from Tana Talk 4. Yo, the first line of his verse. He says, this ain't my story about rags to riches. More about how I mastered physics. Oh, oh. <laughs> Is it? I, I, I got you right there. I got huh? you, bro. Physics? Yeah. That's Butcher it. coming. All right. All right. I didn't know he was versed in quantum theory. Oh. Listen, I've watched uh, 
He said, then he what said, in the game, I used to train like Rocky, catching chickens. Mm. 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 You're going to crap lightning. <laughs> Get up, you son of a bitch, because Mickey loves you. <laughs> um, when did it come out? Uh, like two weeks ago. Oh, okay. Oh, that's why you said it's two weeks late. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, I was speaking about major uh, news outlets mm-hmm. earlier. So uh, CNBC uh-huh. released a pie chart. Okay. They a released a pie chart. I love pie charts. This is a tweet. Okay. Okay. Oh. It says the budget breakdown of a 25-year-old who makes $100,000 a year and is excellent with money via at CNBC Make It. Okay, first of all, $100,000 a year? Really? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> where where uh, $100,000 a year at 25 years old? I mean, okay, I that that's that Here's is how that they is break plausible. it down. That is plausible, but that's not the average. Let's look at the typical monthly old. spending, which they have at two thousand seven hundred and seventy-five dollars for what? Groceries four hundred. Okay, that's that's, not, that's, that's about right. Health insurance two seventy. That's about right. Okay, if if they're if if they have it through a company, that's about right. Dining out two fifty. That is not right. For someone making a hundred thousand, maybe if you live in a town where the only option to dine out is a uh, Waffle House, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you're not making six figures at a place like that. That's what I'm saying. That like two fifty is like one night or two nights in Miami, or not even pretty depending much. on how you go out and where you go. Yeah, utilities one ninety five. No way. Transportation one thirty. First of all, that's all wrong. Because if you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year, you're gonna have a fucking car, and your car payment alone, even if you have good credit, is probably gonna be in, in the, the hundred in the three hundreds. Cell phone, dollars a month, forty dollars. So what the so, fuck did you switch to Mint Mobile? <laughs> so, <laughs> Which I'm thinking about doing because Ryan Reynolds. So, house cleaner, thirty dollars. Wait, you have a house, house cleaner, cleaner and you're paying her thirty dollars? You're a piece you're of a shit. Trash. You're a piece of tr- yeah. Let You're me tell a piece you right of now. Fucking trash. She steals from you. <laughs> <laughs> Internet, twenty dollars. Okay, go on fucking Xfinity website. Okay, it's publicly available. You're not gonna get. Yo, this best case scenario trash. for the first year, forty dollars. Talking about twenty dollars for internet. So pie chart uh, is trash. Is this the is, only way you pay twenty dollars for internet? Is if you on the free Wi-Fi at McDonald's, and that's how much. Uh, Food you have to abide and accumulate twenty dollars a month to get on McDonald's Wi Fi. Wait, wait, I'm not done. Rent eight twenty five. Dog, I was paying eight twenty five like six years ago in Little Haiti. What are you talking about? Yeah. Okay, so wait, wait, because uh, there's still six hundred and fifteen dollars unaccounted for. Strip club donations. Donations. <laughs> His tithing, his ten percent. Everybody in the comments is like, "Donations are drugs." Yeah, <laughs> you're donating to drug yeah. dealers. I was say. <laughs> yeah, it's donations. We're talking about fucking twenty five year old making hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, Dude, that guy is definitely doing a lot of cocaine. <laughs> it's, uh, get out of here. Listen, that I wh- my only thing with that is is like I don't know. only thing. There's several things. No, there's I just many don't know how real that it. pie chart is. Like, I I, I mean, I just. I know someone. I know someone that's living in New York in a one bedroom right now, playing paying five thousand a month rent. Where, where the fuck are you paying eight twenty five? No, listen. I, I so we 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 were talking about this earlier, man. The 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 housing market here in Miami is 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 just in the last year seen. We'll say safe number thirty five percent increase. You know, some people have estimated it up into the even the forty percent increase. Mm-hmm. And over the last over the last year, and that's you're talking about. This city doesn't pay that. This city does not pay like the 
the cool, the average went up 35%. The pay did not go up 1%. No. I mean, you know, the, the, I, you live in this town to live poor unless you're rich. The the industries here are are retail, nightlife, hospitality, restaurants, cruise it's, industry. It's a lot of service industry. Yeah. And then people come with their money and then they just like dump it just for fun and, you know, go out there and try and pick up the coins on the ground. You know, like it, that's the, 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 the locals that have been living here for a long time and are in the service industry. Like it is. It oh, is you don't have to easy. tell me, bro. I listen. I, I did it for almost 20 years yeah, so and it, it's, it, it got to a point where like you're, I was in I was in my mid thirties and I was like, okay, enough is enough. Because I'm having to work sixteen hours in a day, right? Several times a week. Not one time a week or two times a week. This is several times a week. And I'm having to do this so that one, a table can leave me twenty percent or the the tip could be twenty percent, right? And then I got and then I'm gonna save all of this money and it's gonna look like a lot of money, but then I have to pay Sixteen hundred dollars in rent, right? right? You're like, you know, you're and ne- then six hundred fifteen in donations, right? And then I got six hundred fifteen dollars in donations. I got, I got apparently pay. Good thing Ooh, internet is only twenty dollars. I where is the internet twenty dollars? When has the internet? Listen, I was around when the internet fucking came out. It was never twenty. Last time internet was twenty dollars was fucking Earthlink <laughs> when it was dial up. Oh, so uh, on the subject, let me see what you guys think about uh, the Financial Times mm-hmm. says that Miami is the most important city in the United States of America. Facts. That's I I <laughs> that's scary because I know the people that run this city. <laughs> this is the most corrupt city in America. So this is from Financial Times. Why is They it say, the-, the last time Miami was relevant, it wasn't important. In the 1980s, Miami provided nothing more than drugs, mm-hmm. clubs, pastel, bra- All important, pastel blazers, <laughs> uh, high Ali. Is that how you say it? High lie. Oh, high lie. <laughs> no, I sound like an idiot. No, it's okay. Uh but yeah. Gambling and most notably a hit TV show about all four. And it was an awesome. But, TV but show. now it's the most important city in America, not because it stopped being a frivolous, regulation-free, climate-doomed tax haven <laughs> dominated by hot <laughs> micro celebrities. It became the most important city in America because the country became a frivolous, regulation-free, climate-doomed tax haven dominated by hot micro celebrities. You gotta you gotta send me this article. I want to see who the author is of the article. Oh, I forgot to look at the author. Reach out to him. Uh, it, well, look, I I don't disagree with that statement about that last part. I mean, it's what it, aren't 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 we doing something with Bitcoin now as well? <coughs> yeah. So it says um um uh, Miami is getting better and worse at the same time. And La- last yeah. March, the city was mocked when the American Airlines Arena, home of the Miami Heat, was renamed the FTX Arena after a uh, two-year-old cryptocurrency exchange, the platform. Oh, yeah. But by December, the Staples Center had been renamed the Crypto.com Arena. Shit. And Really? And then things like uh, when Miami responded to its massive climate change issues by appointing a chief heat officer, it seemed like a dystopic joke. Then Phoenix, Los Angeles, and Athens, Greece also hired chief heat officers. Okay, that's that's all well and good, but what what realistically has ha- have officials in this town done about the climate change situation because i mean i think every well, single no, it, person that lives in miami well, no, knows I, I, I think the point of the article is like is like miami like on, on some trendsetter shit right now okay mm. from the article in the past if you shook miami. the map of the u.s all the loose bits settled into the floridian peninsula the divorced the bankrupt the unemployed the con artists the ex-convicts and the future convicts 
But during COVID, everyone became a loose bit. <laughs> yeah, well, they can all go fucking back now. <laughs> like legit, this bubble. A migration of people can change a place, like California after the Dust Bowl, or the Midwest after. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Miami is a very transient city, you know. It's saying a lot of billionaires that come here, like. Yeah, that's yeah. great. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. Great, right, great cool. for so, great for the billionaire. So the, he's quoted <laughs> in the article. Definitely, Billy Corbin uh, disagrees with the sentiment. It's not freedom here; it's economic freedom. Corbin believes Miami's importance will fade with the virus. A disposable city suddenly feels essential. It's a mistress. People lived yep. in places that mattered. And they came into contact with the fragile nature of life and needed a moment. If Miami were to disappear off the map tomorrow, it would be of no consequence. No industry would disappear. That's not true. It's not a movement, he says. A Miami movement is what happens after I eat at Sergio's. <laughs> <laughs> well, the that's not true because... I mean, you're have, just saying how there's no industry here we, other than the service we, industry. So what do you think about that? We do have the, the largest port, if I'm not mistaken, on the East Coast. So that yes. that would be that would be catastrophic for the nation. That would not be something that and, would be very good for the nation. I mean, be. like uh, to interpolate Big Bad Wolf, all the better to smuggle cocaine in with. Look, I mean, oh, was it funny? Okay. I mean, my, Miami, like it's it's a hypothetical. Like, oh, if Miami disappeared tomorrow, like that, well, Miami's not going nowhere. Period. And a lot of people, oh, I disagree. I, I don't think it's going anywhere. Oh. I think it's I. There is a 10-year plan to make Miami like the Manhattan of the South. Like the development that's going on, the oh, I don't deals disagree that are being with that. made, and, and it is coming like oh, a fucking wave. I don't disagree with that. But what I the believe only thing is coming, coming like a fucking wave. But what I believe is coming for sure is an actual wave. Is an actual wave. We are we, Oh, you the, mean like a physical saltwater wave? Uh, yes. We, can. we are in we are in <laughs> listen, South Beach is a marsh it's not supposed to be what it is okay that is that is a huge problem okay brickle every single person in miami knows that if it rains don't go to brickle but what it's like it, 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 we're, we're we're at a point in miami where if you look at neighborhoods that are being gentrified mm -hmm. okay they're being gentrified due to the fact that they are just a couple of feet more above sea level than yep. other places more are. valuable mm -hmm. how do you feel about east little havana being referred to as West Brickle. Have you been seeing that lately? No, but that's... On, like, Craigslist and Zillow and shit? Yeah, that's... that that's West inf Brickle. That's, West that's, <laughs> that's, that's influence, but you know what that is? That's influence from somewhere else. That's not that's that's not a Miami thing. Like, that's not... I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just marketing to bring property value up. Everything is going up, you know? They, I remember when I was living in Little Haiti... Uh, they were trying to change uh, a lot of a lot of the areas were trying to like promote this idea that it was called Lemon City in order for, you know, people to buy properties over there. What the fuck is that? I've never heard Lemon that. City. It, it's it, nice and clean, you know, right. you know, it doesn't you have see the little around. you see the little sign when you're on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are US one? <laughs> yeah. A1A. And I remember there was a there was an apartment that came up called Lemon City Flats and they had this big billboard on it. 24 hours later, that shit was spray painted, x out <laughs> and someone wrote big ass letters, Little Haiti. It's like. This community has been around for a long time. You know, this is a proud community has been been there for a, for a minute. You're not going to just go ahead and like just wipe it out, just change the name and expect that everyone's going to be OK with it. You know, like, yeah, gentrification is a real thing. And at the same time, we have to recognize that in a really weird, sick and twisted kind of way. It's just kind of like the evolutionary process of like what happens in cities when they're growing. Like property value goes up, people just have more money and they can afford it, and they just drive you out. And it's like, how do you remedy that? How do you? Well, you have to remedy that by having affordable housing because you still have to have people. But the, but the you problem, still have, you, you well, well, here's the thing: you still have to have people to work the jobs. For Other, sure. or look, if you want to go to the restaurant, if you really want to go to that really cool restaurant, you you need a server and a bartender, and those people need to live, you know. Even in Miami. But how do you create affordable housing that is efficient? Because the problem is, once the government does this, it's shit. It's like almost as bad as a fucking prison. You're living in a prison that's not gated. It's like affordable housing, like when you look at the history of redlining. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. But you're, you, I'm talking about affordable housing 
differently than you're talking about affordable okay. housing. You're talking about affor- affordable housing and rent. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about affordable housing and being and somebody being able to buy a property, mm-hmm. okay, and then build economic wealth off of that property, okay, okay, which gotcha. is which is vital for the community, okay. Gotcha. That 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 in itself gives back. I'm not talking about building more high rises. I'm not talking about that. And that yeah. that that is a prison. Yeah. That is a prison. That you we we know how that ends up, right? We've seen how that ends up. What we need is we need to designate areas where we're going to say single family homes, okay, that are reasonably priced for people that can start a new life. It's not where you're going to stay for the rest of your life. Maybe you do stay there, but it's not the kind of place where you stay. It's the kind of place that helps you go along further. And by the way, also helps the economy in the same, in the same hand. I just think that in Miami, we've, we've moved past the point where we can create single family homes that are reasonably priced. No, you know, of course, like no. The the medium household, <clears throat> or the medium for a house right now, I think it's like Over. fifty thousand dollars. Or for, I mean, I'm sorry, five hundred thousand dollars. Four hundred, four hundred eighty-seven thousand. Yeah, That's it's. Actually. I mean, you know, what? You, tell me somebody in Miami who's got the twenty percent down payment on that house right now that works in the service industry. No. Right. I mean, it, th- there may be some, but it's it the 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 margin there is very small. Yeah, and the high rises that are coming up, they can't afford anyway. So it's like, where the fuck do you go? Yeah, you you go to you go to live with multiple roommates, or you go to live with your parents. You know, that's just how it goes. Well, in that case, of the city that cannibalizes itself, capitalistic collateral damage. Well, it just it cannibalizes itself, and then you're gonna you're eventually what you end up with is what you said before. You end up with you know with something like Detroit. Mm-hmm. You know, now I know everybody's saying Detroit's, you know, on a comeback and, you know, it's, it, you know. But, but, but I mean, listen, they went through hell for almost 30 years. But, but look at look at Miami right now compared to L.A., compared to New York City, compared to Chicago. You know, like these are cities that are like a decade or more ahead of us. Miami is a very young town. It's like it's still growing. It's like a it's it's. It's 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 growing so fast and so vo- and, and so volatile, which makes sense why cryptocurrency is, is a big thing over here. Like everything is volatility. Everything is entrepreneurship. Everything is go get it. Everything is excitement. Everything is club, you know. And so Miami is just a very young town still discovering who it is and, and what it wants. And leadership is also just looking at their profit margin, you know, and they just want to work with investors who are coming from China, from Russia, from such and such place investors from LA and New York. That's like, it's too expensive over here. We're just going to take our business elsewhere. And they come, you know, I've had, I've had like conference, like calls with clients that are telling me that they're bringing their entire business from New York city to Miami. I'm surprised that not every business in New York has done it to be perfectly honest, because it's happening. I, it's happening a lot, a lot more than, than we see. Oh you know? no, I, I, I'm fully aware of that, but, um, you, you, I mean, you can tell, I mean, just the 35% increase in, you know, they know that the, 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 there's not, they know that there's not enough demand for the, or there's not enough supply for the demand that's mm-hmm. about to, sh- to be here. Right. That's already here and even more are coming, you know, and I don't think it's going to slow down. I I'm with you on that. I don't think it's going to slow down. I, I don't it, it, listen. Once you get here <coughs> and you go through a whole winter without having to shovel snow, Right. It's a game changer. Done. <laughs> it's a game changer. Nobody goes, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to go back and shovel snow and be cold. You know, I have if I want to be cold, I have AC. I miss the snow. I like seasons. I enjoy seasons. It's good for you. Yeah, I totally forgot what living through the seasons feel like. Underrated. Yeah, I mean also I, five minutes. I also five minute warning. Okay. I also don't uh I mean, I like the seasons and I like the snow, but I don't feel like that's something that like I'm ever going to be like, oh, you know, I, I want to go freeze my ass off for I four like or the five seasons. months. I like the snow, but that's not a reason for me to go. Ooh, bars. He's on fire tonight. I know. He's you. You got straight yeah. lyrical genius tonight. Yeah, bro. dude. You know what you guys have? What? What's up? Revolutionary facial hair. <laughs> has anyone ever told you that i i know they have i mean i wish i wish my mustache connected to my beard like that 
Look at him. That's it's beautiful. Thing. That's, yeah. Uh, my grandfather hates it. He calls me Castro from time to time. That might be because he's getting old. <laughs> I guess stop that. I guess stop that. Airports. Oh, dude. Yeah. So I had to tell you a quick story. We got five minutes left. So Let's after, so my parents are in the when my parents and, and like my whole life were in the aviation industry. Mm-hmm. Okay, and my stepfather helped develop a patent for something called Safety Glow, which were these uh, photoluminescent light strips. Basically, they're all now they're in every plane, but in the early two thousands they weren't. And I was going. I was helping them out. And oh, going, like, is that the shit on the walkway that yeah, stays lit when yeah, the lights are? That's correct. Yeah. And the signs now, you're just like, they're not electronic signs anymore. It's just like a, a sticker, yeah. essentially, right? So that that's what they did, right? And so um, I was going to four separate cities, okay? All one way tickets. This was probably like less than a year after 9 11. Mm hmm. All right. Holy shit. So I immediately got flagged. Right. So I show up at the airport looking like I look right. And I'm carrying this, you know, the golf bags, like the travel golf bags. Well, we yeah. used to put the strips because they're long strips. We used to put the strips in the golf bags. Right. So the, all they need is a little bit of light. Okay. And then they glow. So in the golf bag, they're glowing. Right. So they flagged me. Right. They pulled me to the side and they <laughs> opened up the fucking golf bag and i knew instantly like when they opened it up they could see the glow yeah. coming from it and i was like oh here we go and they're like what is this and then i had to like explain the whole thing and i had to show them the faa paperwork and it was like a whole thing right and i was like okay fine i literally could not fly for like 15 years holy shit without getting pulled over yeah, like literally pulled out of a line uh-huh. right so finally i i was tra- i was doing a lot of traveling for a job that i had and I was like, dude, this sucks, bro. I have to get to the airport like two hours earlier than like most people do. So I ended up paying the 120 bucks to get the, the TSA like fast pass uh-huh. where they do the whole background check. And it never ha- it's never happened again because I got that. But Jesus, dude, it ra- randomly selected every time. They just look at me, look at my name, Hiram Cuba. <laughs> Looking at me, glowing rods. They're like, what the fuck is bro. happening right now? Bro, I um during during my activism days when I was doing a lot of like, you know, community organizing and protests and shit like that, when uh Trump won back in twenty sixteen and he started talking about like the setting up a Muslim registry. Do you remember? Oh that? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember I, I went on I went online, I bought myself this shirt that said registered Muslim. And I got on a plane with that fucking shirt on and I, I took a flight from Miami to Charlotte because I was doing uh, I was doing an event that I was organizing for for some for an organization I used to work for, and uh, from the from the event that I was at until the hotel taking an Uber, mm-hmm. I was followed by a police car, and when I was chilling at the hotel, uh, I looked out the window. They were just posted up in front of the car, in in front in front of the window. The whole, oh, shit. Three hours later, I look out. They're still out there. I was like, holy shit! So like. Clearly, you know, I made an impression on you, somebody. You got, you got put on a list quick. Yeah. You got put on a list quick. It's yeah. hard to get off those lists, bro. <laughs> it's, it's hard to get off those not, lists. Not anymore because uh, cause, uh, your, boy's, your boy's more conservative now. So. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> that is, well, just real quick, it's funny that you said that when you were young. You were very. So yeah. uh, I still consider myself a liberal. Social, I still I'm very, a social liberal. I, 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 I still very much consider myself a liberal. But I feel that the, the the Democratic Party. I used to be a Democrat. The Democratic Party All left me. Left me. Like it. it All just, my life. It. it at, like at this point, I'm like, I. You guys are no better than the other side no. at this point. No, and you know what's crazy too is like they they're acting like they don't want to admit that like. M- me and my entire family, all my cousins, my aunties, uncles, all of them, like they've been Democrats their whole life. All of them are no longer Democrat. Right. And I'm sh- I know my family's not the only one that's going through these transitions. Well, so my mom actually transitioned from the right to the left. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Well, a lot happened that kind of yeah, forced her hand there, but not forced her hand, but made her see things a little bit differently, but um it it's it's one of those things where like again, I I still consider myself a real liberal, but th- that that means that that I question every, every, everybody gets it. Yeah. No, there's, I don't have a side. 
Mm-hmm. My, my, like I don't just because you have a D in front of your name doesn't mean you're you get a you're pass, a right? You get a pass. You don't get a pass. As a matter of fact, you have it harder than the other guy because I know the other guy's trying to fuck me. Which is why when you brought up the guys running for Senate from Georgia, I I I I used to easily be like, oh, that's the guy I'm gonna go for him, and now it's like. Yeah, you're running as a Democrat, so I know what's going to happen at the end of that election, you know. So I think mm. I think we're just reaching a place where, like, we're being a lot more critical. And the vetting process to earn the trust of people who say they're there to serve us is much tighter. Like, we just don't fall for the bullshit anymore from either side because there are good Democrats out there. And there are of good course. and there are good Republicans out there, too, you know. But they're they're hard to come across because the system is just, you know set out to constantly fucking make it feel like it's warfare, you know? So that we have more, that we have more things that we don't have in common than actually, that's the thing. Like they never want to talk about the shit that we have in common. Cause they know that the second they start talking about that, that's unifying people and they lose their power. <laughs> so. They never want to talk about that shit. I don't know what kind of note we want to end on, but I was just going to say it's gone to the point, uh, where, Everyone's been driven to be so entrenched in their point of view that you can't even open a dialogue with someone of an opposing view because there is no dialogue. It's instantly confrontation. Well, then you're giving that person a platform. Then you're giving that, that's the thing, is that people don't want, and it's on both sides. Mm-hmm. It's literally on oh, both yeah, sides. It's, like, the most, no, it's the craziest fucking thing no, I've like, ever no, seen like, No, life. like I'm saying, is like the discourse between human beings is being eroded to nothing. Where it's like, if you think a certain way, you're automatically, you're on that side of the issue. Right. That's who you stand with. There's no nuance anymore. Yeah. There's no nuance anymore. There's no, there's no, I like, I don't have to, like, Again, I think it's one of the best things Dave Chappelle ever said is that one of the great faults that or one of the great lies that we've started to believe in this country is that if I uh, love you, Mm -hmm. then I have to agree with everything that you believe in. And that if I don't agree with everything that you believe in, then I hate you. That's not the case. Like we're not. By the way, we are all not supposed to. Everybody's different. So everybody's going to have like. I don't understand how you don't go into that conversation already knowing that fundamental thing that everybody's different. Yep. Dave, Dave Chappelle, uh, I, I watched his stand up when he came to, uh, to hard rock. And one of the things that really struck me that he said was it feels better to be free than it is to be right. And I think that we're living in a society where we're obsessed with one upping other people being right, being right. No, like my way. And you see it from all sides and it's like, you know what, bro? Like it feels better to be free than to be right. So you know what? I'm going to speak my mind. I'm going to tell my truth. You tell your truth. I'm not going to yuck your yum. You're free to be who you want to be. Just don't fucking tell me how to be. Right. And if we can like. That used to be a thing that, that used, used to, to be, be a thing. thing. And that's, and that's <laughs> why we have to do everything we can to protect the, the art of comedy. You know, stand up comedy. No. Like it's an American thing. You know, it, it really is. An, it, it really is. It's it. You know, uh, it we could say it started here. I think we could comfortably say that 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 stand up comedy, you know, in the form that it's in right now, started here, and you know, some of the greatest comedians have r- literally changed people's complete perspective on issues and yep. views. I mean, if you look at if you listen to any of George Carlin's stuff, it's hard. He's the goat. It, it's even if you don't agree with him, even if you don't agree with him, it's not. It's still hard to be like, man. He really laid out. Yeah. He really laid out some very valid he's points. The, he's the greatest, you know? bro. He's the greatest. Uh, his shit is still super relevant. E- e- oh, yeah. Every- you saw his segment on germs? Oh, yeah. Bro, that was fucking amazing. <laughs> that was, that was one of imagine? his later stand-ups, bro, too. Yeah, if George Carlin were still here right now. Oh, my now, God. Bro. Oh, my God. I That was a voice that was truly missed during the Trump oh, yeah. era. Absolutely, because, bro. I mean, it was basically everything that he said would happen was happen. going to happen. Right. So on top of that, was, he, I mean, he was pretty spot on with that. Uh, to me, you know, Chappelle will always, you know, like he's he's my generation's greatest comic. Agreed. Uh, but to me, there is the only person that I think is better than Chappelle with words 
George was, Carlin. was George Carlin. Yeah. Yeah. It was George Carlin. Uh, and I, I think Chappelle does a lot. I've come to think it. that Andrew Schultz is my generation's greatest he, comic. He, he's up and coming. He's up and coming, but, you know, he's... He's funny. I like he'll, him. He'll get there. He'll continue to evolve. One thing that's interesting that we're seeing is comedians are, like, now doing podcasts, too. You know what I mean? Well, it's a great venue like Andrew for Andrew Schultz, Dave Chappelle now, uh, you know, Joe Rogan. So it's well, like, I don't think it's a comedian thing. Everyone's doing a podcast. <laughs> well, but I, I say that I say that to say Theo this. Vaughn. <laughs> I, I say that to say this in the in the in the same way that stand up comedy made such an impact in society and has shifted culture. So so is podcasting, potting, you know. And I, I think that in the future we're gonna look back, and and these will be the great videos that we'll tune into. You know, if, if we still fucking have electricity, <laughs> we still have electricity. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. Um, I mean, I, I, you know, the, the, I think having comedians obviously speak their mind is a great thing. I mean, I, I imagine trying to silence somebody like Bill Burr, right? Um, and, and that's, and that's awesome. What I would like to see is this format of podcasting really with real reporters and it's been a thing that I've talked about several times where just a real, like I would like real podcasts, like a podcast with real news mm -hmm. devoid from, you know, this is just off of the AP wire, right? Like we're, yeah. you know, and I think they're out there, but they're, they're, they're hard to come by. And then usually they lean one way or the other. That's the challenge. You right. Know? That's the whole thing. So. I don't, that's where I, I want us to get beyond that. I, you know? I, I want us to get to a place where we're no longer afraid to speak our minds. Like, I just think that, like, we've become too if, much If of you a form your opinion on something, only hearing it from one source, then you are going to be woefully uh, uninformed. You also know what we're desperately in need of, bro? John Stewart left a huge void. Ah. Uh. Political satire, mm. in, in, incorporating comedy, and that's what made George Carlin great. Incorporating comedy with with politics and ideology is such a, a such a powerful platform because it helps us hold on to our humanity. Because and also too, like, who the fuck really watches C-SPAN? Nobody. Well, okay, sorry, I'm a little bit of an old guy. No, I tune in every once in a while. No, but like, who watches C-SPAN? Because like at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like <laughs> don't know a single person. This, that this shit's in there, but it's like reading the fucking dictionary. Oh, yeah, it's a, it it's a chore. It is. It is. But you know, um, uh, I I think that uh, we need more. We need more uh, lightheartedness with the way in which we express our views. You know, or just do some shit bad. I I'd like to also see some bad shit crazy. You know, you guys know like uh, Andrew Dice Clay, Sam uh, Sam Kennison. Yeah, uh, no, I know. Old I, comedians. I, yes. Can uh, you imagine them like saying the news? On a podcast or something like that, <laughs> that'd be cool. The di well, first of all, if Sam Kinison was uh, saying something on a podcast, we would have a problem because he'd be back from the dead. Um, <laughs> and Andrew Dice Clay, that would be fucking hilarious. Rest in peace, Andrew Dice Clay is just—he's so fucking funny, nice man. I used to know. I mean, I, I won't say it now because it's completely inappropriate. But I, I like even as like a 10, 11 year old kid, I used to know all the nursery rhymes. Like yeah. All, oh yeah, dude. <laughs> we got we got busted listening to uh, Eddie Murphy raw oh, on man. a family trip. Fucking we weren't supposed to be listening to that. <laughs> we were like 10, 12 years old and Bill shit. Bill Hicks. <laughs> Shout out to Bill Hicks. Yeah. yeah th I think this has been a uh, phenomenal conversation. I appreciate you having me, bro. Appreciate you coming. Appreciate you yeah. coming, man. It's been great. Uh Marvel Bishop. Yeah, you can never say again that this is not an intellectual podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's, coming. it's coming for you, Mr. Bishop. You got anything else uh, you want to uh, leave with people? Ah, bro. Just love you guys, and uh, I'm looking forward to hopping back on later on. All right. Getting on another show. That's what she said. <laughs> Do it. Nailed it. Also what she said. We out. Alright. 
from Shroom Skyrim. 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 Skyrim